Hello and welcome back to my channel where your curiosity is turned into valuable skills. Today, we are taking a significant leap forward by embarking on a real life project, crafting an advanced Power BI dashboard from the ground up. This tutorial is specifically designed for those of you eager to apply your Power BI knowledge in practical real world scenarios. For her newcomers or anyone looking to refresh their foundational skills, be sure to look out for my comprehensive beginner's guide to Power BI, available in the video description below. It covers everything from the initial setup to a data transformation, setting you up perfectly for today's advanced session. Also, for my audience who joined the last Excel dashboard creation tutorial, you're in for a treat. This week, we are shifting gears to Power BI, taking your data visualization capabilities to the next level. And don't worry, we've got you covered with a free practical file, also available in the description below so you can follow along seamlessly. And you can add this hands-on experience to your professional profile. Here is a brief overview of what we'll cover today in creating a Power BI dashboard. Opening Power BI Desktop and setting the stage for your dashboard creation. Porting and transforming data from CSV files, ensuring the database is clean and dashboard ready. Modeling data to establish relationships between different data tables. A crucial step for an insightful analysis. Drafting visualizations that tell a story. Using our data to craft compelling charts and graphs. Customizing and publishing our dashboard, making it not only informative, but also visually appealing. So without further delay, let's jump into creating a Power BI dashboard that will not only enhance your portfolio, but also sharpen your analytical skills. Let's get started. For this Power BI dashboard project, we will be working with two data sets. The first, named Details Dataset, encompasses a wide array of transactional information, including transaction identifiers, profit margins, notably, losses are indicated by negative numbers, quantities of items sold, detailed categorization of these items, and the mode of payment utilized. The second dataset, referred to as Orders Dataset, delves into specifics regarding order IDs, date of order placement, customer names, and their geographical information, cities and states, alongside designated regions. To kick off our project, we initiate by launching Power BI Desktop. This can be done either by searching for it on your computer or downloading it from the Microsoft Store if it hasn't been installed yet on your desktop. When I click to open and click on New Reports under the Home tab, you will be introduced to the Power BI interface. Now, let's quickly go over everything included here. Beginning on the left side, the default view you're seeing is the Reports view. This is where we put together our reports or charts. It's where all the chart magic happens. And just beneath that is the Data view. Or table view which displays all your tables it's in the data view that we craft dark queries and then all the way at the end we have the model view this is the place for linking tables or data sources and building relationships between them essentially this is where your data model comes to life I'm just skimming the surface for now we will dive deeper into these topics later on. Power BI's interface bears a resemblance to Excel, making it somewhat familiar ground to start on. Taking a look at the Home tab, you will find an option to get data. Clicking on Data opens up a world of data sources for you to pull from, including Excel, SQL Server, and you can also import data from CSV files, among others. 
Other noteworthy options include transform data and refresh. Once you've brought your data into Power BI, you might need to tidy it up or manipulate it in some way. That's where transform data comes into play. We will explore this more as we progress. Furthermore, we will be utilizing visual charts and text boxes in our dashboard as we move forward, which would help to enhance our data presentation. We will start off now by importing our data into Power BI. So I'll click on Get Data. Since our data is in CSV format, we select the CSV option and proceed to connect to our files. After locating and selecting one of our CSV files, Power BI provides a preview of the data, allowing for a preliminary review. Should there be a need for data manipulation or cleaning, the Transform Data option opens up the Power Query Editor, a robust tool for data preparation tasks. After you preview your data and ensure everything is correctly set up, clicking Load Data begins the import process. But how can you verify that your data has indeed been successfully loaded into Power BI? To confirm this, look towards the right side of the Power BI interface. A new section should now be visible, indicating the data's successful import. This area will display the table and columns you have imported, such as categories, transaction ID, subcategory, among others. I will go ahead now and bring in the other data we need for the project. Moving on to the transform data part. Clicking on it opens up a new area. Remember, every edit you make here gets listed on the right under Apply Steps tracking all your changes. This section lets you tweak column's data types, alter column values, and more, very similar to what you're used to in Excel. Right at the top, you see tabs like Home, Transform, Hard Column, View, and Tools, each packed with different functions. Here is where you can add new data. Enter data manually, or manage your data through various options. You can refresh your data, delete or add columns, and even split columns, just like in Excel, all from within Power BI. If you're not sure about how to proceed or want to practice, you can explore the various options by right-clicking on the column header. For instance, if you need to change the data type of a column from text to another format like dates or various numerical formats, decimals, fixed decimals, whole number or percentage, you can do that easily here. Similar to Excel, Power BI allows you to remove duplicates within a column to clean your data further. And if you need to create a duplicate of a column for any reason, that's just a click away. For example, duplicating the other column will generate a copy named Order ID Copy. If this duplicate isn't needed, you can simply remove it by clicking on this hex here. On the left side of the screen, you will notice the tables listed. By selecting, say, the Details table, it opens up for further operations. Let's say you want to add a new column. There's a straightforward Add Column option at the top. Clicking on it leads you to Custom Column where you're prompted to give your new column a name. I will call mine test. Below that, you enter a formula for the column values. For instance, if you want to create a column that multiplies amount by quantity, you will select this field and apply the multiplication. The result is a new column named test showing the product of amount and quantity. This flexibility allows you to manipulate and format your data within Power Query extensively, 
Should you decide that the column is not needed, it can be deleted easily, either directly or through the applied step where your transformations are recorded. Another powerful feature in Power Query is the group by function found under the transform tab. It offers both basic and advanced options. Let's break it down. In basic, you're prompted to decide on a column for grouping. Let's choose category as an example. Our data sets contains three categories and we aim to group by this. You then give this operation a new name. Select an operation such as sum and choose the column you wish to perform this operation on, like amount. What you end up with is a summarized table showing the total amount per category, neatly categorized under the name of the three categories. However, suppose this grouping isn't what we need for our project. In that case, we can simply remove this step by clicking the hex next to it in the applied step, reverting to our main table layout. For more complex scenario, we will explore the advanced group by option, allowing us to group by multiple columns and perform various operations. For an advanced grouping, say we want to analyze data by both category and subcategory. We will name this operation new and decide to sum the amount. Furthermore, with the hard aggregation feature, we can deepen our analysis, adding another aggregation named new too, and we choose to average the quantity column. This setup offers a rich layered view of our data, summing amounts and averaging quantities across categories and subcategories, yielding a comprehensive report for our grouped data. Again, should this advanced report not align with our project goals, removing it is straightforward. Just a click on the hex in the applied step. In Power Query, as we've shown, it's entirely possible to create new columns by leveraging various formulas and operations, tailoring your dataset to meet specific analytical needs. For those eager to delve deeper into the functionalities and possibilities that DAX offers, I'll be sharing a detailed tutorial soon. This will offer you a step-by-step -step guide to mastering these techniques. To ensure you don't miss out on this valuable resource, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel and clicking on the notification bell. That way, you'll be instantly notified as soon as the video is uploaded. But considering the broad and complex nature of DAX and its role in Power BI for creating data models, an in-depth exploration will require more time than we have at the moment. I will not be going into that today. Once you have completed your data editing and formatting, it's crucial not to simply close the window. Before exiting, navigate to Home tab and select Close and Apply. This step is essential to ensure that all your changes are saved and applied. Skipping this could result in losing all the modifications you made. After applying your changes and returning to the main Power BI interface, your data is ready for further exploration analysis or to be incorporated into reports. I'll be adding into the model view next. It plays a key role in Power BI for creating connections between tables or data you've imported, which is crucial for crafting reports and visuals. Power BI is designed to automatically have these connections formed, such as using Hoda ID to establish a link in this scenario. However, if adjustments are needed, you simply need to right-click on here and select Properties to make those edits. In the Model view, you get a clear view of how tables are connected. But if things get tricky, you can step in and adjust manually on this page, simply by clicking the column you want to link and decide on the relationship type that fits best, like one-to-one -one or one-to-many. 
Let's now dive into creating charts and reports. Initially, we will start by setting up a title for the dashboard, similar to how you would do in Excel by adding a text box and having it formatted to your preference. Starting with a profit chart, in Power BI, you can pick any type of chart from the visualization pane. Once you have chosen, for example, a stacked column chart, you then have the necessary data like dates and profits. There's a need to adjust the data type for dates to make sure everything displays correctly. So as it is, we have a long list of the dates and we're not able to make selections based on year, quarter, month, or day. So to adjust the data type, we go quickly to the table view. Under the data set for orders, if you click on the column for other dates, you will see that the data type is set to text. We want to have that changed to date and click yes. With that, a date hierarchy has been created by Power BI automatically. And now I can make my date selection to be based on months. And now I'm able to have the sum of profits by month. Switching chart types in Power BI is as easy as it is in Excel. If you feel a different visualization better suits your data, changing it is simple. And it doesn't require altering the underlying data. I will stick with the stacked column chart. If you don't want these blanks in your charts, just like we currently have it, you might want to add a background. So don't select the chart. Click outside on the screen instead. Here you find the format option. Clicking on it reveals various settings, including page information and canvas settings. The canvas or the white sheet you see can have a wallpaper added to it. For example, if I choose blue, the entire canvas turns blue. But if the transparency is set to 100, it won't change the color until you reduce the transparency all the way down to zero. However, I'm going for an image background instead of a simple color. I will use a dark gradient image. which I'll link in the description for you to use. Adjusting the transparency to zero will reveal the background image. Now, the chart's color doesn't match our dashboard theme. We can format that. To do this, click on the chart, and on the right, you'll find the option to format your visual. Right here, you can adjust various elements, like turning off axis title for a cleaner look since the months and sum are already clear. You can also tweak text colors. I'm going for white for better visibility. It's not showing now, but you'll have it shown later once the background is changed. Next, to change the chart's background, navigate to the general section, then properties, where you can adjust the canvas height, essentially resizing the charts. Moving to the effects section, lets you pick a background color for your visual. I will pick this color and have the transparency increased to 100. You can also apply a border to enhance the chart's appearance to match the dashboard theme. If you prefer no grid lines for a cleaner look, simply turn them off in the settings. Our first basic chart is now ready. But it seems we've lost the heading. Let's add that back in. Under the general settings, you'll find the option for title. I'll have this renamed to profit by month. Adjust the title size and change the color for visibility. 
I also want the title centered, which is easily done with the alignment settings. If the values on your Y or X axis are not clear, you can dive back into the visual settings. Under Y or X axis, adjust the values color to gray to make them more visible. I noticed that the graph's value didn't match due to outdated data. Just like refreshing a pivot table in Excel, clicking on the refresh button in Power BI updates the data. This is crucial when changes are made to the underlying data file or within Power BI itself. It helps to ensure your visualizations are always accurate. Furthermore, customizing the color of our chat columns is another feature we can explore. Directly in the format setting, under the columns option, Changing the color to say orange applies this change across all bars because we have all selected here under categories. Power BI also offers conditional formatting, allowing for dynamic coloring based on data values. And you can set rules to color bars differently based on their value range. You can have colors set for your lowest value or your maximum value. You can as well have it added to the middle. Lastly, you can also adjust the individual column colors. However, in my case, I prefer a more uniform look. So I'm going to change this back to hall and go back to the conditional formatting. To set a rule on the basis of profit, their positive values are colored blue and negative values red. Visually distinguishing between profit and loss. Our first chart showcasing profit by month is all set up. I will have it positioned to the right side. But there's one last detail to address. Currently, the chart corners are sharp which isn't the look I'm going for. I'll prefer to have them softer. To achieve this, you have a couple of options. If you're not keen on searching through the menu, head straight to general section. Once there, under effect, look for the border option. You will notice that as you adjust the value of the border radius, the corners of the chart will begin to round off. I'm setting mine to 15 to ensure the corners are nicely softened to my liking. If you've just created a chart and want to make another one that's similar, you can simply duplicate the chart by copying and pasting. This method is efficient because if you need to tweak any values, you don't have to redo all the formatting. For example, if you initially created a chart for profit, but now you want to have amounts displayed instead, just replace the profit value with the amount in the duplicated chart. This way, all the styling and formatting will be carried over, saving you time. Moving on to our second chart, we are focusing on data at the subcategory level. For this analysis, a stacked bar chart works best. You can easily insert the subcategory data into the chart or the Y axis. I prefer adding it directly to the chart for convenience and add your profits to the chart or the X axis. This chart will help identify which subcategories are most profitable. It allows for strategic decisions like offering discounts or stocking up in inventory. If you're overwhelmed by too many categories in your chart, you can filter to show only the top performance. For instance, to display the top five subcategories, use the filter option on the visual. Select top end as the filter type and specify you want the top five based on profit. With that, the filter neatly presents only the most relevant data. Formatting the chart from scratch can be time consuming. That's where the Format Pentile tool under the Home tab comes in handy, mirroring Excel's functionality. 
With a click, you can apply the formatting of one chart to another, significantly cutting down on the time needed for styling. Moreover, you can personalize your chart further by adjusting the colors of the bars. Power BI allows you to set specific rows for color coding or simply choose different colors manually, making your charts visually appealing. Lastly, if the y-axis labels are too small, you can have them enlarged for better visibility. Adjusting their size to something like 10 makes the charts easier to read. With these steps, our two charts are now beautifully prepared and ready for presentation. Now, we are transitioning to another chart type, the pie charts. Within this category, Power BI offers two variations the standard pie chart and the donut chart. For her purposes, I'm opting to work with the donut chart to illustrate categories and their corresponding order counts. To do this, I'll place category columns into the chart, aiming to display a count of addresses by linking it to quantity. Although initially, it might appear somewhat unrefined, we will have it fine-tuned shortly. Firstly, I will apply Format Painter to quickly inherit styling from a previous chart. Next, the formatting phase begins to tailor the chart to our preferences. Keeping the legends as they are, I will dive into adjusting the slices, specifically the colors, to ensure a consistent look with our existing visuals. The spacing between the slices is customizable. However, I'm setting it to 65 for now, based on what visually appeals to me. Further detailing involves modifying the values displayed on the chart to enhance their visibility. How we adjust the color and size, increasing it to 10 for clarity. An important adjustment is made to the label content options where I choose to display each category percentage of total. This insightful breakdown reveals, for example, that furniture constitutes 16% of orders, electronics 20%, and clothing a significant 62%. Such clarity in distribution is invaluable. Continuing with the value adjustments, I will opt for whole numbers by eliminating decimals. Final touches include removing unnecessary elements like the legends from the right side of the chart. So I will have that turned off. Replicating these charts for a different data set, such as payment modes, is straightforward with a copy and paste action. Retaining the sum of quantity, I will swap category for payment mode. We now have four charts ready, each offering unique insights into the data sets. In our dashboard, we have incorporated four key metrics and you might wonder how they were created. Let's revisit the visualization pane where you'll find an option for a card. Selecting this feature, you can easily display any value you wish. For instance, if we aim to show the total amount first, we simply drag the amount field into the card and the sum of the amount is presented. To ensure consistency across our visualizations, the Format Painter tool comes in handy. However, sometimes the default color of the values may not fit our visual theme. By navigating to the callout level in the Format option, we can adjust the value color to white and increase its size for better visibility. Creating additional cards for other key metrics like the total number of orders follows a similar process, utilizing the Ctrl C and Ctrl V for efficiency. If a specific metric such as profit is needed, 
It's simply a matter of swapping the displayed field within the card. For metrics not directly available, like the average order value, a bit of calculation is needed. This involves creating a new column in the data view. We're going to be working on a details data set. So we have a new column created where we compute the average order value by dividing the total amount by the number of orders. I will have the result displayed as a whole number. I will give the new column a name average order. And with that, we will have the new column with calculated values included as part of what we have on the right here. So I will have the sum of quantity replaced with the calculated value to show the average order figure. To maintain clarity, I will have the displayed result changed to a whole number by coming to the callout value. And under value decimal places, I will change it to zero. Completing the remaining two charts follows the same process we've utilized for our previous visuals. Let's briefly go over how to create charts for top customer and top state, emphasizing the alterations in value selections rather than the formatting steps, which remain constant. For the top state charts, I will have this duplicated. We had state and amount to depict the monetary contributions from various regions. To focus on the most significant contributors, a filter is applied to display only the top four states based on the sum amount. Adjustments may be needed for visibility, such as modifying the y-axis settings or the chart color scheme to ensure clarity and coherence with the dashboard's overall design. And we have this increased so we can have the value shown fully. So I'll adjust this and there you go. If you notice, the title is showing profit by category. So I'm going to go to the general tab on that title and have this change to amount by state. And that seems to be it for now. So these are my top performing states. Similarly, for the top customer chart, the process is mirrored. Using a stacked column chart, we plot customer names against the amount spent, allowing us to identify and subsequently target our most valuable customers with specific offers or discounts. Formatting tools like the Format Painter swiftly apply the desired visual style to the new chart, saving time and maintaining a unified look across the dashboard. Filtering options are again utilized to highlight top spenders, ensuring the dashboard focuses on key metrics that drive decision making. I will hope to showcase the four highest spenders, providing clear insights into customer spending pattern. The last step in refining a dashboard involves adding a filter enabling us to sift through various values conveniently. Here's how we achieve that. Navigate to the slicer option in the visualization pane and select it. This introduces a slicer into your dashboard, which we will use for filtering based on quarters. Drag the quarter field into the slicer and you immediately see options for quarter one to quarter four. Initially, the slicer might not look very appealing. To enhance its visual appeal, we'll have to switch its format from the default list to a tile view. You can adjust the tile size to make it more compact and easier to interact with. Select any previously formatted card and use Format Painter to apply similar formatting to the slicer to improve consistency across the dashboard. We would have the slicer duplicated to create another one based on the states that will help to filter for states. 
With this filter, you can decide which specific filter or range to apply based on your analytical skills. For a more user-friendly experience, I will change the slicer for state from the tile mode to a drop-down menu. To have more space, I will have the header remote. We have that turned off, we don't need that for now. With the slicer setup, you can now filter the dashboard based on specific criteria, such as quarters. And then you can make an analysis based on any selected states. So for instance, if we select Greater London, the dashboard will be updated to show the details for London. And if you choose another state, for instance, Kent, you can see the data updating, providing targeted insights into shopping patterns or performance metrics for that particular state. To revert to viewing all data after applying a specific filter, simply deselect your choice in the slicer. This action refreshes the dashboard and displays the complete data set again. I'm going to also have my title formatted. And there you have it. We have just created an e-commerce sales dashboard using Power BI. And then you can go ahead to have this shared with any of your team members or any other person by utilizing the publish option. Click on save and then here you give it a name and save. I'm going to have mine sent to my workspace. And there you go, it's been published to the web. And directly within Power BI Online, my dashboard is fully visible, prepared for sharing with either my team members or the wider world. I am able to interact with the dashboard here as well.